Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I want to do a little recap video on the last Elite Series event of the season. Um, Lacrosse, Wisconsin, uh, Upper Mississippi River. So this event, we could fish Pool 7, Pool 8, and Pool 9 of the Upper Mississippi River. Now, just to give you a little bit of background on my history there um, and how that place sets up, it's, it's river fishing, river fishing at its finest. You've got smallmouth, you've got largemouth, you've got grass, a lot of coontail grass, a lot of duckweed. If you guys have followed events there in the past, you know, um, you know, frogging, flipping, uh, fishing sandbars, topwater baits, um, and you can catch them a lot of different ways. There's some spillways that always play big there. Um, you can just catch them a lot of different ways on the upper Mississippi. And it's a, it's a really fun place. I think this was my third time uh, fishing an event there, either third or fourth time, I believe third. I've had some decent finishes there in the past, but never done real, real well. Um, and as you guys know, going into this event, I'm second in points in Angler of the Year. So this is a big event. You know, I think I went into this event 30 something points behind Brandon Polnick for Angler of the Year. So uh, really had a legitimate shot at winning the Angler of the Year. So that definitely affected my mindset going into this event. You know, I really wasn't worried about it. I just knew I wanted to catch some. My whole goal going into the event was to catch some, do my job, try to my best to make a top 10. And I really felt like if I could make a top 10 in this event, um, that I would have done my job and I would have made Brandon Pollock have to earn Angler of the Year. Uh, and that's eventually exactly what happened. Ended up finishing this event uh, in fourth place, had an awesome event. Um, man, just a, a really, really big final day. Uh, I'll take you through each day, day by day. This is probably going to be a pretty long video because I really want to dial in um, on how I caught them each day and, and how it all progressed. I got some really cool fish catches on here I want to show you guys. So stay tuned for this one. It's going to be fun. Let's get right into it. All right, guys. So first I want to talk about um, day one, bait progression. I caught them kind of on different baits every day. We had different weather every day. Uh, I had a good practice in lacrosse. I did. I found several areas. Um, I found one smallmouth area up by the dam where I could catch some in the current. Um, and then I found several little key places in the grass where I could catch largemouth. Uh, a lot of schooling largemouth going on. Uh, they're feeding on little small bait. Uh, so day one, I get out there um, and I, I start off with a decent lemon on some schooling largemouth, uh, you know, and, and day one, the weather that we had, it really set up well for a little bitty topwater popper. One of my favorite ways to catch them in the fall, a lot of times they're keying on little bitty small bait. Uh, so I like to low, throw a little small topwater popper. And that's exactly how I caught most of my fish on the first day. That is what is called a Booyah Boss Pop. And they actually make that boss pop in two different sizes. They make it in a bigger size and the smaller size. This is the smaller size. I change those hooks out, put mustad trebles on there. I throw that on 30 pound, vicious no fade braid. I put a little small piece of 20 pound uh, vicious fluorocarbon on there about eight inches long. And that's just to keep that bait from tangling up in that braid whenever I um, make a cast. But that's what I threw that on. I threw it on my six foot 10 medium. Uh, Brandon Lester Mustad Instinct Rod, a 7-3 to 1 reel. Um, and that's how I caught most of my fish the first day because it was flat, slick, calm. Uh, there was not much commotion on the water. So a walking bait, something like that was just too much. I wanted that real subtle, that little bitty popper just going pop, pop, pop. All right, <clears throat> let's fast forward to day two. Day one, I had 14 and change. I was sitting down in the 20s, I think. Uh, day two, I get out there. It's raining like crazy. Had to adjust a little bit. Uh, day two, I caught most of my weight on a topwater walking bait. Uh, this is a Hedden Super Spook Junior uh, bone color. That is probably day in and day out my favorite topwater bait of all time. I've caught thousands of fish on that bait here around my house, on Gunnersville, TVA chain, Lake Fork, all over the country. I've caught them on that thing. It, it just gets bites. Bone color, Super Spook Junior. Basically the same setup as the popper, just a little bit different rod, same reel, same, same reel, same line setup. I threw it on my seven foot two 
medium Mustang Instinct rod. Uh, really a great rod, got a lot of tip to it. You can cast that thing a mile, work it great, and when you get a big one, it's got plenty of tip to absorb that shock of that braid. So uh, check that out if you're looking for a good, good rod for your walking bait. Again, had a solid day too, uh, 13 something I think it was. And, and again, caught most of my weight that day on the Super Spook Junior. Um, day three, I get out there, it's sunny again, it's post front, uh, I had to catch them a little bit different way on day three. Day three, I caught a lot of my weight on a Nico rig. Um, this is actually the exact same Nico rig I won at Pickwick with, uh, except a little bit different color. I threw green pumpkin on the river. I also threw plum just a little bit, but I threw green pumpkin a lot on the river. Uh, just because they seemed to bite it a little bit better and it matched that water color a little bit better. I was putting a 332nd Mustad tungsten nail weight in it, size two Mustad Titan X Wacky Nico hook, um, and the uh, Berkeley Maxent Mag Hit Worm. Green pumpkin and plum were the two colors I threw. Survived day three, made the day four cut. Um, I squeezed in the day four cut in 10th place. Um, and just go, I'm sure you guys watched it on day three, Polnick. Uh, actually wrapped up the AOY, so he won AOY. Uh, hats off to him, he had an incredible season. I still had work to do. On day number four, I had to go out there and catch some dang bass and move up a couple places to solidify my spot to finish number two in Angler of the Year. So I go out on day four, um, and like I told you, we got that big rain on day two of the event. Well, on day four, I get out there and I, I catch a small limit on the worm and stuff. And I get back in that area where I had, I had caught him on the popper on day number two. I get back there on day four and I noticed that it, the water had come up a little bit. It had gotten a little bit dirty um, in that area where I was catching him on the popper. So I just kept pushing up in there a little bit. And as I pushed up in there, I noticed the water getting cleaner. And I saw a couple of good sized largemouth up in there just swimming around in that grass. And I was thinking, you know, I just, I just kept pushing up in there. There were some real pretty mats. And the first mat I came to, I threw my frog up there and one just came unglued on it. And it was a 411, the biggest fish I had caught all week. Um, ended up catching almost 18 pounds just out of that one little mat and ended up on day four, catching the biggest bag of the entire event, over 18 pounds, I think it was like 18.7. Um, biggest bag of the event, made a big comeback, jumped from 10th all the way up to fourth, had a great, great event, um, and man, it was a lot of fun. Let me show you guys my frogging setup because this is something that I've worked on uh, quite a bit here. You know, obviously I'm from Southern Middle Tennessee. I fish Gunnersville a good bit, all the Tennessee River Lakes, um, and frogging, I guess, honestly, I would have to say frogging really originated on either Wheeler or Gunnersville. That's where, uh, that's where I feel like the, the, the technique really originated. So I spent a lot of time kind of working on this. This is the Spro 65 uh, Natural Red. It's probably day in and day out my favorite color um, and, and favorite frog. You know, uh, the, the only thing I really do to this frog, I cut, I cut those legs down, I trim the legs down real short as you can see right there. And then I put some BBs in this frog. And I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it. The microphone on this GoPro, GoPro is probably not that great, but all you do, you just put a few BBs in that frog and that does two things. Number one, it, it makes that frog a little bit heavier so it compresses that mat a little bit. Number two, it gives you a little bit of sound so those fish can really hone in on where that frog is when you're working it over the mat. All right, your frog and setup is very important. I threw it on my seven foot two heavy, Mustad Instinct, Brandon Lester Signature Series rod, eight to one bait casting reel, 60 pound, vicious, no fade braid. You do not want to be breaking your line. Can you get by with 50? Probably, but why not throw 60? So I throw 60. Um, and then I told you guys about the frog. So that's my setup there. Um, man, call some really big ones. I got some awesome footage I want to show you guys. So check out this footage from day four right here real quick, and we'll be back to wrap this thing up.
kidding me? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little recap, man. That was an awesome event. I always love going to the upper Mississippi. It's just full of fish. And I'll tell you what's fun. Those fish absolutely love a topwater bait there. Whether it's a popper, whether it's a buzz bait, whether it's a frog, it doesn't matter. They just love a topwater bait there. So, man, a lot of fun that week, catching 30 to 50 fish a day. Um, just a fun place to fish. I definitely recommend y'all going and checking that place out. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, you can get all this stuff, rods, reels, line, tackle, all of it, MidwayUSA.com. They've got everything you need if you are an outdoorsman like myself. I appreciate those guys sponsoring this video. I'll see y'all next time right here. Brandon Lester Fishing.